Kadyrov's kingdom, news about 10,000 Chechen troops leaving to Ukraine alarmed many, and yet, one must know context to understand its meaning. Many assume that after Putin's victory Chechnya became just part of Russia and thus Chechen troops are just Russian regulars of Chechen origin. Not quite. Thread. Chechnya is an ethnic republic in the south of Russia. It has a quickly growing population of 1, 4 million. Its natural demographic growth is highly important in the military context. In depopulating Russia that's one of few regions with steady supply of young males to send to war. Chechnya consists of northern, lowland, parts which the continuation of Eurasian steppe and southern, highland part, limited by the Caucasus range. Historically, Chechens lived in cold infertile highland and wished to occupy the warm and rich lowland which lied beyond their reach. Why? Well, for the same reason Muscovy grew on infertile land of, equals not black soil. Why Russians didn't move south to, equals black soil. Because black soil area equals Eurasian steppe. Nomads didn't like farmers occupying their steppe. See my substack for details. That's how it was in the Middle Ages. But after 1500 the world started changing quickly and Chechnya was changing too. Three external factors facilitated the Chechen expansion. Allowing Chechens to climb down from poor southern highland to occupy rich and fertile northern lowland. First was maize, the corn. This American plant boosted the productivity of farming in the Caucasian region immensely. I like Armenian epithet for maize Egyptian wheat. Egyptian means rich, abundant, fertile. The growth in farming productivity triggered the population growth. Secondly, guns. Until cheap and reliable guns became available in Caucasus, Highlanders had no chance against the nomads on the open plain. They could die heroically and that's it. Guns shifted the balance of power in favor of sedentary farmers like they did, well, everywhere. Thirdly, Russian expansion. Under Ivan the Terrible, Russia destroyed Khanates of Kazan, Astrakhan and Siberia. Thus some states which could mobilize nomads were gone. The remaining one, Crimea, was very much preoccupied with the war against Russia which now became existential. These three factors, corn, Guns and Russian expansion facilitated the Chechen expansion of the early modern era. Their territory grew, population boomed, power increased, and of course Chechen society very much transformed socially and culturally. First, Chechens were gradually converting to Islam. It was a very late and superficial conversion. The only ancient Islamic region in Caucasus is the South Dagestan, Durbant. It became a part of Arabic Caliphate in 643. Whatever light to the north converted like 1000 years later. For a millennium the Iron Wall of Durban divided the urbane Islamic south and tribal pagan north. Consider south digestiny tongues. Lesgians call the north. Direction. Kefir equals infidels. Ruchals Jahannam equals the hell. And Chechnya was certainly in the north. South Dagestan ancient Islamic stronghold, North Dagestan, more recent one, and Chechnya wasn't much influenced by Islam till like yesterday, that's why it was largely converted from Dagestan and by Dagestanists who played the role of religious teachers and missionaries here, and it all came together, cheap and abundant guns gave huge fatal power to non-aims. Previously most of Caucasus including Chechnya was governed by aristocratic feudal class who fought as heavy cavalrymen. Now their power was over, one bullet is enough to finish such a night. Egalitarian teachings of Islam helped to justify a social revolution, slaughter and expulsion of nobility. It happened elsewhere too, look Haji Murad by Leo Tolstoy, but in Chechnya it was the most radical. By the 18th C aristocracy was gone. And then the Russians arrived. When Russians came, they hated the Chechen order. Why? Some portray Russian Empire as Russian or Orthodox, but after 1613 it was primarily the aristocratic empire. Everywhere they came Russians sided with nobility and landlords against peasants. Estonia, Latvia, Georgia, etc. They would do it in Chechnya, too, but alas. There was no nobility to deal with. Instead there were military structures organized around the Sufi orders. 
Now many portray Sufis as kinda hippie pacifists. Not true. Sufis had militant orders. Sufi zikr is basically the war dance. Prince Baryatinsky, commander in Caucasus wrote to the Tsar, Muradism, equals Sufi militancy, isn't just religious, but also social movement. To fight it we need to restore the noble class or create it according to the order established in the empire. Empire was very aristocratic. Russian Empire broke resistance by late 19th C but once it collapsed in 1917, the war of extermination between the Chechens and the Cossack settlers started. Chechens declared pro-red, Cossacks pro-white, similar to Ulster Scots vs Highland Gales in Revolutionary America. Chechen Sufi authorities declared the service in Red Army to be jihad. If you die fighting for communism, you get to heaven. During the white summer of 1919 white forces were very close to taking Moscow and overthrowing the Bolsheviks, but then Highlanders stroke in their back. Of course whites sent best troops and drowned Chechnya in blood. Of course they leveled villages with artillery. But, every soldier and cannon sent to Chechnya were taken from the advance on Moscow. Critical assault failed. The whites lost. Bolshevik propaganda in Caucasus. Comrades Muslims, under the green banner of the Prophet you fought for your land stolen by the enemies of the people, now under the red banner of workers and peasants, under star of laboring and oppressed, gather from east and west, north and south, on your saddles, comrades, the Bolshevik victory brought some benefits for the Chechens, most importantly, the USSR launched a thorough campaign of decossacization. Whatever Cossacks in Chechnya survived the civil war were deported, jailed or shot. Like elsewhere, the Cossack country was no more. By the way, I am a Kazan Tatar. My grandpa who was highly critical of communists for many reasons admitted that they did one wonderful thing, finished the Cossacks. By the late 19th C Cossacks formed the main death squad of the empire. Many dreamt of their total extermination. And yet Soviet policy soon made Chechens disaffected. Attempts to impose collective farms, Kulkas, in 1932 triggered a major rebellion which aimed to restore the Imamate theocracy. For the entire 1930s army and state security were busy suppressing Chechen insurgency. In 1944 Stalin tried the final solution of the Chechen question. He deported them to Central Asia and Kazakhstan. They lived on new lands in semi-prison camp conditions, heavily overwatched. Their republic was abolished, lands and houses distributed among Russian settlers. But then Khrushchev takes power. In 1956 he makes a report on the cult of personality and its consequences. Of course he meant Stalin. Khrushchev argued that Stalin usurped power, assumed the godlike status, and pursued criminal policies. Stalinism was disavowed, decisions reversed. Next year, in 1957 the de facto prison regime, for all the deported ethnicities was abolished. They got their personal freedom again, the freedom of movement, and all of them except for the Crimean Tatars were allowed to return to their homelands, and Chechens returned en masse. There were problems however, most importantly, once they returned they found that their lands, houses, Fields are already occupied by settlers. That created huge tensions and sparked many ethnic clashes. Secondly, the Chechen society transformed. Previously Teeps, the Chechen clans, were real political and military force. Teeps could mobilize militants along the clan lines, make and enforce collective decisions, etc. It was gone. Now it was simply a matter of identity. Secondly, the traditions were broken abruptly. Russians kept the Cyrillic alphabet and thus could access their old culture. Chechens couldn't. Soviets transferred the alphabets of Muslim ethnicities from Arabic to Latin and then to Cyrillic. The old culture became inaccessible. I believe nobody explained this logic better than Machiavelli in his discourses on Livy. Indeed, a new sect emerged and tried to eliminate any memory of the past. For that they introduced a new language and they largely succeeded.